Imagine, if you will, that you have a new idea, and that new idea is like a little candle that you have to take from one side of the room to it, the other. It's a delicate flame, and the slightest breeze might blow it out. And you've got to get it to the other side and make sure it's still lit. That's kind of what it's like to take a big idea and turn it into a solution. My name is Richard Taggart. I'm Chief Information Officer. I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes touching on how you can think about taking an idea and turning it into a solution. Now, for thousands of years, Aboriginal people have been gathered on these lands, sharing their ideas, their dreams. And so I just want to take a moment to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land, the Gadigal people of the great Eora Nation, and to acknowledge their elders past, present, and emerging. And also acknowledge any First Nations people who are here today looking for the next big idea as well. Now, I am a reasonably recent appointment to Sydney Local Health District, and I am super excited to have joined an organization with a long legacy of taking ideas to solutions, particularly in digital health. We have one of the most comprehensive and most mature electronic medical records in the Southern Hemisphere, and for over 25 years, we've been working with our partners like Cerner to develop solutions and to continually innovate so that we can give our clinicians the tools that they need to provide the best quality care to patients and their families. And as a result of that sustained long-term investment, we are the respectful guardians of over 7 million individuals' patient records which means that not only can we provide super personalized healthcare to them, but we can also use that information and that data to look for opportunities to continually improve. And Sydney has been a digital health pioneer, particularly when it comes to electronic medicines management. In 2007, Concord was one of the first hospitals in Australia to roll out an integrated electronic medicines management solution. And that experience we were able to share with many hundreds of other hospitals all across Australia and beyond on their electronic medicines management journey. And I'm super proud of the team that just last month we were able to complete the electronic medicines management rollout across all of our acute facilities, making us the first metro local health district in New South Wales to achieve that major milestone. And we're just getting started. Now, I am privileged to lead a team of 160 wicked smart, talented people, some of the leaders in digital health. And my team and I, we're here to do our life's best work. We really are super passionate about solving problems that improve outcomes for our patients. Now, prior to joining Sydney Local Health District, as Julie said, I worked at the big fruit company. And I worked as part of the healthcare team there for about four years, and a significant chunk of my time was working with Australian app developers who wanted to use Apple technology to solve problems for patients. And we're really privileged in Australia that we have some of the world's leading app developers, and those apps are used by tens of millions of people all over the world to help them as they live about a day. Now, that experience has meant that I've got to work with some successful projects and some not successful projects, and some that have gone on around the world, but coming local to home, I want to talk about a project that's just emerging now, a solution that's being developed here in Sydney, and it's for pancreatic cancer. This solution is being supported by the Australian Digital Health Agency's digital test beds, and this app is really to try and test the hypothesis. Unfortunately, pancreatic cancer is one of the most deadly forms of cancer, and only about 12% of patients survive beyond 12 months. It's also a very aggressive disease, so from the time of diagnosis, you have a very short period of time before potentially you end up in palliative care, and that's a shock to patients and their families. The hypothesis of this research project is that if you could make a patient in control of their own health information, if you're able to give them an app that lets them interact with their care team and follow a care plan, you might just be able to see whether they're de deteriorating, you might be able to make them an expert in their health, and you might just be able to improve their quality of life. It feels like a very worthwhile project. And this is one of many different projects that I've been fortunate enough to be involved in. And that experience has taught me a few key lessons that I wanted to share with the group today. The first is that solutions, particularly apps, are products. They are not projects. It's a subtle difference, but to apply product management thinking and the product lifecycle thinking versus project management thinking can make a massive difference in taking a product to being something that can, people can use. The other second issue is that you need to build for the user itself, not for your own particular problem. Let's say, for example, you're running a clinic and you have a problem collecting information from patients and you build a beautiful solution to solve your problem, but you're surprised to find that nobody uses it. And that's because you haven't solved the problem for those end users. You haven't delivered value to them, and that is super important. 
The third principle is something that you probably already know, and you think about when you use an app in your own life every day, whether it's banking or Uber, in that those apps usually do something quite simple, maybe one or two things, and they do it incredibly well. So I'd encourage you to think the same. Keep it simple, but make it great. The fourth is around sustainability. You might have the best solution, people might love it, but if you can't keep it up and running, then you've wasted everybody's time. So it's important to think about sustainability as early as possible. And then finally, you need to be brutally honest with yourselves. It might be an idea that you love, but unless there's somebody out there willing to part with their hard-earned cash to keep that sustainable, then maybe it isn't worthwhile pursuing. Now, this is a photograph of Apple's $5 billion head office in Cupertino. I was really privileged to be there when it first opened, and it really is a center of innovation in one of the world's most innovative companies. And one of the things that I learned about Apple's approach to innovation that I'm gonna keep with me for the rest of my career is this, that there are a thousand no's to every yes. What that means is, is that you have to have lots of ideas in order for you to find something truly great, truly impactful. What it also means is that you have to be brave and you have to be rigorous and you have to take focus. So you might say no to 999 really good ideas so that you can focus on that great one. And that's, that's good methodology for wherever you are. Now at Sydney, we actively encourage ideas. In fact, ICT Services invites people to submit ideas to the department all the time and we receive hundreds if not thousands of ideas from clinicians and users every year. In fact, there are so many ideas in our database that if my team went and implemented every single one of them, it would take us about 14 years to achieve all of that. Now, you might think as a chief information officer that would be my worst nightmare, but I love that. Because what that means is my team and I can look at those ideas, we can find the common themes, we can find those sets of features that everybody needs and focus our effort on those. In the industry, that's called finding the golden thread. And that golden thread is the minimum set of features and things that you need to do in order to solve a problem or to achieve a solution. And I encourage you to think about that in your own solutions before you add on the bells and whistles. Now, along the way, I have learned from some not so successful projects. And there are really three turkeys that you need to be mindful of when you're developing a solution. The first is the fearful turkey or the turkey who's not motivated enough to actually take that idea and just have a go. They're just too frightened, they think it won't work or people won't back them. The opposite end of the spectrum is the idea that Turkey, that person who's so, so stubborn that they won't give up on an idea despite all the evidence that that idea is probably gonna fail. And the third is one thing that we're all gonna have to accept is that you really cannot please everybody. So there is always one grumpy Turkey and you just have to ignore that one. The other thing that I would really encourage people to do and I encourage my team to do it and then it's safe to fail. In fact, we should fail as often and as fast as possible. And we should celebrate those failures just as much as we celebrate those successes. And where we can, we should even publish and share those failures because as we close that door, it might open a new one for ourselves or for others. And then we pick ourselves up and try again and look for another solution. So today, I'm hoping that you're gonna hear lots of great ideas and support maybe the next big idea. I encourage you not to be a turkey, to light a spark, because that spark might just be the next big idea. Welcome to the big idea.